400 MB. And, uh, you know, there are, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the data generated was uh, 10 GB. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, read length, that is the point here. Uh, in, in, the, in the earlier cases, uh, you know, the short read technology, the read lengths are very short, like in a 250 base pair or 300 base pair in that range. But here, these kind of machines are able to generate or sequence uh, the data of uh, the, the uh, DNA of length, maybe like 20 KB. 20 KB. This is the mean length. This is an, a statistics of an actual data I have analyzed. I have kept here. Okay. This is a screenshot of that data which I analyzed. And here, this is the uh, you know this is a mean length uh, for the data generated in this PacBay machine. This is from the PacBay machine, not from the Nano per data uh, machine. So here also you have the data generated uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, that is occupying almost like. 20 GB hard disk space. Okay, so uh, this is fantastic in terms of the read length uh, because you know you are able to cover the uh, longer regions in your DNA. Uh, so uh, you know the, uh, definitely you obviously you would imagine that you know the shearing would have not applied here. You don't need to do the shearing of the material uh, for before sequencing. Okay, so actually speaking, you need to have a high molecular weight dna for uh, such these kind of purposes okay so otherwise you know uh, if it, if your dna itself is degraded or started degrading you know the, you may not be having a, a longer uh, pieces of i mean fragments of the dna in that okay so make sure that you know you have a better quality dna high molecular weight dna in your uh, in in your uh, isolated uh, pool and then uh, you can prepare the library and uh, apply to that okay so uh, but you know, even though this is fantastic to have such technology that is having a longer read capacity, uh, longer uh, sequencing capacity, the problem we face here is that uh, you know there is a small compensation of the quality of the data coming out of these machines. Okay, uh, but 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 you know uh, they are also evolving. Uh, you know, uh, recently they have made a lot of improvements uh, in terms of the quality. Of the data uh, they uh, they generate uh, from the machines. Okay, especially especially the PacBio machines are uh, you know uh, comparatively very good. Uh, uh, the OND is still try to uh, trying to improve, but they they also have made improvements. You know you can easily see that you know the you know recent publications are talking about these comparisons uh, where you know the SMRT is uh, 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 you know uh, the PacBio technology. Uh, so. Uh, PacBio has made a huge improvement where they have less than one percentage of uh, data issues in uh, in the data coming out. But in the case of uh, in the case of ONT, they are still improving. Uh, currently, it is kind of uh, you know uh, not not uh, better than uh, PacBio now. Yeah. Uh, then uh, yeah, genome. What is the genome? I, I mean, I should not explain this, but I'm just trying to. Uh, kind of uh, cover that part also. So genome is a complete collection of the genetic material in a cell, right? So uh, you, you you would have the chromosomal DNA as well as the organelle DNA also. There is another point here that you know uh, you, you you can easily uh, comprehend uh, the fact that you know the short read technology would be uh, 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 you know struggling to uh, struggling to cover the organellar DNAs. By, why? Because the the uh, the force you apply to shear the DNA, uh, shear the chromosomal DNA, uh, would be so high that these organellar DNA won't be able to withstand and stay, uh, you know, uh, intact at least for some some uh, hundred base pair or two hundred base pair length. Uh, instead, it would uh, uh, bro it would get broken out down into even smaller pieces, and then the amplification itself may not be. Uh, happening for the all the fragments in that, and uh, you know, ray, uh, you know, some random species would get amplified, and uh, again, there can be some biases. In a lot of amplification, biases can happen for the chromosomal DNA while the uh, organellar DNA are uh, getting uh, kind of ignored. Uh, so uh, it, it is very difficult to get uh, this organellar DNA g genome covered in uh, short read technique. But you know, uh, there there is a way out that you know 
instead of uh, uh, isolating the entire DNA together, you should have a protocol to isolate the organelle DNA alone and then uh, prepare the library and uh, do that. Yeah. So then you get a uh, you know uh, better quality uh, material and a better quality genome. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as you all know, we have uh, you know. Uh, our genome, our genome is, uh, uh, you know, in the range of uh, three billion uh, base pairs in our G DNA. Uh, so, uh, you know, there is there is estimated to be having uh, some twenty five thousand genes. Yeah. So these are some, uh, uh, you know, statistics of uh, various genomes uh, and their sizes. Okay. So uh, you can see that you know. Uh, the human has uh, 2.9 to 3 billion uh, 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 nucleotides in it. <coughs> Saccharomyces are very small. <coughs> the gallus is in the range of 1 billion. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is another uh, representation. You know, you don't have any a, a clue that you know uh, all the mammalians are having bigger genome or uh, plants are having the genome bigger genome or smaller genome it's it's all it's all uh, a, a kind of uh, you know difficult to speculate you know you need a, a specific technology to speculate or uh, calculate the uh, genome sizes i hope you all uh, you know you know words for cytometric technique or other uh, related techniques to do that yeah so uh, the the target would be like you know take the genome uh, data sequenced and then uh, build an assembly Build an assembly in the sense, you know, you have to stitch all those smaller reads together to build the longer read. Okay, so once you have the assembled genome ready, you can go for the gene, pretty identify the genes, then the gene coordinates, and the genes can be annotated using some. Okay, building an assembly from the smaller pieces or the longer uh, reads are very heavy uh, because you know you have to. Uh, take all these data which is say in, in, in GBs or TBs and process it together and prepare a, a assembly. So this is a, this is the pro, uh, this is a kind of illustration uh, in which you know you you fragment the DNA into smaller pieces. You have a larger molecule uh, uh, here and you know you, you fragment it to smaller pieces and then uh, those those pieces get sequenced in this fashion. And uh, it make make a note that you know um, uh, you know uh, since this uh, uh, shearing is very random, you know you get a chance you 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 get a possibility that you know uh, the genome uh, the fragments uh, generated from the genome would have some overlapping regions, so that you know the uh, uh, the programs computational programs look for uh, these kind of overlapping regions and then stick them together and make it in an order. Yeah. So this is the process. Uh, see here, uh, these two these two pieces. You can the, the color coding. You can uh, from the color coding, you can easily identify the re, re, uh, data. So these these overlapping regions are found. These overlapping regions are found. So the uh, the assembled sequence would be would look like this. So this can go on uh, like that, you know, for a, a longer longer uh, size. Okay. So these are uh, major tools that are available to do such processes. Uh, Soft de novo, Masurka, Velvet, and Spades are uh, good uh, tools to do that. Okay, so then uh, th there are uh, further processes like you know uh, you from the you have to look from the uh, from the from the bottom uh, you know uh, part. See here you have the read. You are building some uh, bigger pieces using this data, and then you are trying to stitch these. I mean we call it as condics. Okay. So the context to be uh, stitched together to make bigger pieces because you know you might make some assumptions here and then you have some uh, relative uh, you know uh, data uh, having uh, you know in, in these pieces and you may stitch stitch to do a bigger piece. And one more point is that you know there are other technology data that can be used to give uh, more information about the relation between these pieces so that they can build a better scaffold. Okay. Ultimately, we are trying to uh, stitch the data together to make the bigger, the longer ultimate count chromosomes, right? So, this particular task is very challenging. Uh, you know, uh, that is why we don't have uh, uh, too many reference genomes available there. Instead, we have a lot of draft draft genomes. Draft genomes are easy to make 
uh, using one one or two technologies and then you get all these smaller or little uh, comparatively fairly bigger uh, pieces like the scaffolds and then you are done with your analysis but nowadays have the chromosome level assemblies yeah so this is another illustration uh, where in which you have the short read data used to uh, uh, you know build the context or the assembly uh, scaffolds and then you have a combination of different data to uh, used in this this strategy where you make a uh, you know a bigger bigger uh, or longer uh, uh, scaffolds okay you can easily make out uh, that you know this hybrid technology uh, utilizes some uh, you know short reads as well as some pack bio or long reads in any technology then that those the longer pieces are giving hints to the smaller uh, contexts that are made from the shorter reads uh, to stitch them together or even order them together uh, in, 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 in into a uh, scaffold level assembly yeah so then uh, you know you have a further technology like you know after finishing this part you can uh, still do for uh, go for some more level of uh, targeted sequencing or uh, kind of uh, in a specialized sequencing to have the gap filling to be done to stitch the uh, chromes uh, the the bigger uh, scaffolds together to have chromosome level assemblies also yeah here is uh, one example uh, where uh, we employed uh, all possible technology almost all possible technologies available at that time you know uh, to build the chromosome level assembly or we call it a pseudo molecular assembly because you know that the chromosomes are also not completely covered uh, from you know uh, end to end uh, uh, there are there are gaps or there are missing regions still there even after using lot many different platform uh, or the, this particular article uh, uh, you know uh, you know our our study got featured in uh, nature genetics this uh, uh, beginning of this year uh, you know this is about the cobra genome uh, uh, indian cobra genome we could uh, prepare it to the level of chromosomes uh, so where, when when we say chromosome level, it is not complete. Uh, uh, still now it is not complete. Okay, so we had, uh, you know, uh, from the cyto cytogenetic uh, analysis, we know that there are uh, you know two n is equal to thirty eight, and uh, you know there are some macro <coughs> macro chromosomes are, and <coughs> um, uh, seven pairs of macro chromosomes, and then you have some eleven micro six chromosomes also there. All together make it to 38 pair uh, pair of uh, 38 uh, so then uh, you know what we could achieve uh, if using all the technology is that you know we had uh, assembled uh, 19 longer bigger scaffolds and uh, you know uh, those are those are of size uh, in, in, you know in the range of chromosomes okay so we can we could uh, I understand that you know these these are the you know, definitely we are we are sequencing, sequencing the ha haploid genome, right? So uh, 19 chromosomes are uh, covered in uh, covered in these 19 scaffolds is what we could understand from the analysis. We performed uh, uh, using the knowledge from other snake species genomes. Okay, and uh, you know uh, the N50 is one important value when you uh, evaluate uh, any assembled genome. Uh, what is the level of uh, quality of the genome which you are uh, you know n50 is something like you know what is the number uh, what is the shortest uh, piece of or the scaffold uh, the uh, what is the length of the shortest uh, scaffold that is covering uh, all the uh, you know 50 percent of the genome using any 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 pieces that are bigger than this particular piece okay so you have to you can understand that what are the uh, what, what is the amount of data which is covered in the bigger uh, scaffolds okay so we could achieve a wonderful this is a very uh, you know very big uh, achievement in fact uh, you know uh, uh, you might understand uh, uh, other other genomes if you evaluate you know it is difficult to achieve okay so there were 23000 uh, odd uh, proteins and then uh, you know specifically we could uh, focus on to some 139 toxins toxin uh, producing genes and out of which you know 19 of them are uh, venom specific genes okay so we had uh, some uh, uh, mass spectrometric data also uh, from the venom uh, we collected 
and uh, you so so th this information were uh, correlating also with the uh, gene expression levels we ex examined so we we could do a venom gland specific uh, you know uh, gene expression study uh, uh, we isolated the uh, rna from the venom glands and then we compared it with the uh, uh, you know other other nine different tissues we collected from the uh, snake and then we could see that these 19 of them are highly uh, 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 you know uh, um, expressed in venom gland exclusively and then uh, you know we could annotate them to have those uh, genome emulate venom specific information from that okay so this was a wonderful study and we learned a lot from this yeah this is the data we used for preparing such a, a good quality genome uh, so here you can see that you know we have employed uh, see so many different platforms and uh, in a huge amount of data so you can you have to imagine how much amount of data we have generated and how many uh, this is uh, uh, something like you know th three to four year work uh, so we uh, perform yeah so this is a pack bio data we generated something about uh, 40x of data whenever see we say x it is a, a times factor uh, uh, you know uh, uh, above above the uh, uh, genome size okay so then we have the ond data also we had the illumina data we have uh, uh, the bionano data that is optical mapping data a heavy amount of data then chicago this is like uh, the chromosome linkage data high c is another technique uh, for uh, chromosome freezing and then uh, you know sequencing then you have the chromium uh, 10x chromium data so this much amount of data is used so you have the pictorial representation for the same you know you have the illumina technology or ND technology pack bio chicago libraries chicago libraries are uh, I, I'll come to that uh, anyways. Yeah. So one more important point is that, you know, after finishing all this assembly and annotation and all those things, then we could do one more level of uh, study that we could sequence a single chromosome. You know, we were able to uh, extract uh, the chromosome alone from the gel using uh, the high, high sophisticated techniques and, uh, ext uh, you know, I, I uh, pick that, uh, separate that uh, chromosome alone and then sequence it separately. And we did that, okay? Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so let us explain. Okay, little bit about the high c technology. I I, I, I think, uh, you know, everybody got the uh, little understanding on the short read technique, long read technique and all those things. And here is the high c technique where we, uh, we try to freeze the chromatin networks and, uh, you know, then we try to uh, you know sequence that uh, uh, you know linked chromosome uh, linked chromatin uh, reads okay so that we get an understanding of the the pieces or the regions that are uh, from the same chromosome okay so it, it is it is with the assumption that you know the the region of uh, the same chromosome would be uh, you know uh, lying crawl you know like in the in the same i mean very close to each other and then you know you make a, a f uh, you know freezing of it and then you cut from like it from uh, i mean uh, uh, from that end and then you sequence it this is a pictorial representation what you have seen you know this was this was uh, this is a part of uh, same chromosome from two different uh, regions it was uh, lying down uh, in a, in a crystal fashion and then you know we freeze it and then you know it, it is it is this is a technology high c technology they uh, offer you know you have you get the uh, you get the kit to do that and you know but the, the 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 challenge is that you know you have to have the intact nucleus in the tissue that so that you know you have the uh, you know um, uh, possibility to do this yeah so then after making these kind of uh, free freezed uh, uh, you know uh, molecules uh, complexes and then they uh, you know prepare library and sequence both the ends and then you know these two pieces are from two different regions of the same chromosome so when you have the scaffolds uh, prepared from the uh, sequencing uh, illumina or uh, pack bio sequencing data you are supplying this information that you know there are uh, there are regions that are very uh, similar from the same uh, chromosomes so the uh, computer algorithm will go and look into all the scaffolds uh, will build from the uh, older older platforms and see whether there is a 
region in uh, two different or three different uh, uh, scaffolds that are coming from the same chromosome by which you uh, you know uh, uh, you know stitch the uh, uh, stitch those uh, pieces together to have the chromosome uh, you know uh, how all all regions in the chromosome uh, stitched together okay so uh, as you can imagine there can be gaps that those are filled with ends because we don't have the information about those uh, bases that are sitting in between right if it was the already there it would have already gotten stitched but it is not there yeah so now we are just trying to uh, you know pick them and uh, make it to do single piece uh, with uh, ends introduced to it right this is another important technique uh, you know these are very recent maybe like you know uh, three to five year time uh, uh, these this all came uh, came up so the optical mapping uh, especially the bio nano technology is very good uh, 